one of the main problems has been that the agenda which we've had, uh, the sort of political agenda, uh, has been very narrow and has not really opened people's minds to the thoughts or things we can do, uh, which are much more radical and much, probably much more effective. I think that inequality has perhaps risen in the uh, United Kingdom more than in uh, some of the continental European countries. Although in recent, for the last 10, 15 years, it's Germany has seen, in fact, the biggest increase. And also in Sweden, there's a big increase in inequality, in income inequality. Uh, so it's not just a UK problem. Um, and I, whether things are different, I suppose that we each have our own traditions. And for example, there's no doubt that the social partners play a more important role in Europe than they do in the European mainland than they do in the United Kingdom. It's not just national governments, to whom obviously much of the proposals like taxes and improving social security and so on are addressed, but it's also it's local governments can do things in terms, for example, of employment uh, and uh, access to important uh, facilities like housing and so on. And it's also uh, at a European level, the European Union has set out ambitious objectives for uh, Europe 2020 to reduce poverty and social exclusion. And globally, the world as a whole is, is about to launch its new sustainable development goals, which will do, I think, make it uh, much more uh, possible to, to try and narrow the, the large gaps there are globally. Well, I think it's very important to think about this historically because one tends to forget that, for example, it was the United States in the 1960s that had a war on poverty. There was no war on poverty in Europe at that time, even though we did have persistent poverty, which we were not aware of and didn't take action to address. So I think one has to remember that uh, what's happening in different countries changes over time. And uh, so again, we tend to forget, for example, that for many years after the war, we had full employment. And so these things do change. And again, the United States probably is more concerned about employment than, than, than uh, Europe has been. It's uh, more than that, though. It's also, of course, the labor market is changing. And uh, for example, the Netherlands has, I think, the world record level of uh, part-time employment. Uh, and of course, that's a, a trend in many countries that people are now working two or three days a week rather than five or six days a week. And also people tending to have a range of different jobs, partly self-employed, partly employed, which makes it not sufficient really to talk about it in terms of jobs. <laughs> a job isn't the same for everyone. And I think some of our policies need to be changed to meet these very different circumstances in the 21st century. I think that um, the, the problems being currently addressed in terms of uh, public finances and austerity will, I hope, recede somewhat into the background. And I think some of that has been uh, exaggerated and had probably effects which have been, in terms of inequality, quite seriously, uh, seriously bad. So I hope we will see an end of that and a rather more positive approach to what can be achieved in, after all, what are in, in the European Union, on the whole, very rich, well-off countries. <laughs>